so excited for this, guys. We are doing something different on the podcast today. Today, we get to learn from two exceptional individuals, share stories, and more importantly, learn about them and their experiences with optimizing their own health. If you're ready, our guests today are both nutritionists and health coaches. They specialize on applying an animal-based primal diet, and their coaching company focuses on helping others lose weight, gain energy, boosting overall mood, increasing strength, and whilst also eliminating those nasty cravings. They also have written a book titled Awaken Your Body. This book talks about how you can awaken your body to its full potential through an animal-based primal diet. I'm so excited. I'm here with the Awaken Chicks, Ali and Patricia. Welcome to the show. Hi. <laughs> Glad to be here. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. Um, it's my first time to have two guests on on the show, but I say two is better than one. Always, <laughs> all the time. And uh, we can all bounce off ideas off of each other. I'm glad that you guys both are here. Um, I'd like to go around if we can, you know, introduce ourselves, you know, one by one. You now, you can start with maybe just briefly uh, who you are, what you do, and the evolution of your diet, you know, you don't have to be super specific, just so we can get a sense of where you were coming from, you know, the thought process in making a change, you know, if you can do it in stages, you know, just get into how you got started, let's say, for example, you know, maybe this got you started on the keto diet, and then progressed from there, how long were you on it, and then the diet and your progression from there. You know, maybe Ali, you can start us and then Patricia. Yeah, well, you know, for me, you know, growing up, I was into sports and, you know, really trying to prioritize protein. I always went for more of an animal based way of eating. But in college, um, I actually went to a school that was very pro vegan and I didn't really have access to any like animal products except for maybe like chicken fingers. And so in an attempt at the time, thinking I was being healthy, I was eating vegan. But then I just... I got super sick. I lost like 20 pounds, um, had like no muscle mass where I couldn't even ring a mop. And um, then after that, I just, I thought that for me at the time, I was actually feeling better eating with more junk food because um, I just felt better from a vegan diet to eating a lot of processed food. But flash forward like a year or two, I gained like 50 pounds and um, I just honestly hated the way I looked and felt terrible about myself. So over the years after that, I started, you know, more of like a ketogenic diet and I tried all these different diets. Um, but it wasn't until I went more animal based and even starting a carnivore diet that I actually started to feel better, look better, acne went away, I lost weight. But you know, even since then, something just, um, I just wanted to see how good could I actually feel. And that's when, you know, we stumbled upon raw primal eating. So eating raw meat, having raw dairy. And to be honest, I think now I actually prefer eating raw meat than uh, cooked meat, which is weird for even me to say, because I really like ribeyes. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, it's been a wild journey, but I actually think I resonate more with raw animal-based eating. Thanks, Ali. Patricia. And then for me, I think my story is kind of similar to other people's where I've always been into health and fitness and just trying to look better, feel better, you know, working out. For me, though, I tried literally everything under the sun you know I had my little stint with veganism and being a vegetarian which did not last long at all <laughs> um, I did try uh, keto which I know works for a lot of people but it just didn't work too well for me um, I tried you know counting my macros keeping track of them um, but you know calorie counting but nothing really seemed to work that well. Um, the thing for me was that my cravings always got the best of me after about a couple months and then I'll just go back downhill to what I was doing before, you know, not really watching what I ate, um, eating junk food, and then, you know, gaining weight back. So for me, um, when I heard about carnivore, I heard it on Joe Rogan, which is where you hear a bunch of crazy stuff. <laughs> but I was like, you know what, it sounds crazy, but 
let me try it. So um, I did that for about a couple months. Um, we did that together. And mm -hmm. we just noticed this complete change in everything. I mean, I didn't have any cravings. I lost weight. I gained muscle. I gained strength, which was crazy. I wasn't able to do a pull up before. And then I was doing like three out of nowhere. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we just felt really much better. And also I, at the time I had really bad neck pain, um, so much so that I sometimes couldn't go to work. Um, so I stayed home. Um, but that just went away as well. Acne went away. Um, other like pains went away. So we were like, you know what, let's continue doing this and let's keep searching and like digging into this carnivore stuff. And then on the way there, we got into raw carnivore primal diet. And, um, you know, like Ali was saying, like, we just feel a lot better eating just raw foods. Um, especially raw meat. And we, we now prefer it. it. It's kind of crazy. At first it was really weird um, eating raw meat, but you just kind of get used to it along the way and your taste buds change, your palate changes. So um, that's where we're at right now. I feel great. Now you guys seem to be always wanting to eat healthy and always open for, you know, other things that may optimize health. Um, for you, Ali, were you always, what was your goal in the beginning? You know, you, you said that, you know, you tried vegan. Was it, was it always um, losing weight or what, what is the goal for you, you know, early on, you know, with eating healthy, you know, you said you were on vegan at some point um, and that didn't last long for you, but what's the mindset for you going into these diets and, and, and learning new things? It seems like you guys are super open with, um, you know, things that are potentially uh, could optimize your health even more. Yeah. Well, it's for me going into any diet, it's always about trying to, you know, be the healthiest version of myself mm -hmm. and, you know, while there is maybe some like fat loss that is involved, you know, or even just recompositioning of my body, you know, my goal is basically to love how I look, you know, where I look in the mirror and I, you know, I love the way I look, I think I'm beautiful. And there was, you know, a period there for me, you know, after just really going ham on junk food where I really didn't feel that way about myself. And so, you know, that, you know, led to a lot of depressive thoughts and just thoughts I didn't like about myself. So on the journey I am now, you know, it's always about, you know, for me being healthier and a lot of people, you know, they like to subscribe themselves to a lot of specific diets mm -hmm. um, and, you know, preach that one diet is best for everybody. And, you know, for us, um, and I know I can speak for myself on this is that, you know, you know, every, everybody's a little bit different. Some people, you know, are good with, you know, having maybe a higher, super high percentage of fat in their diet and, and maybe others don't, don't do so well on that. And I know for us, you know, that being open-minded and just seeing, you know, where, you know, a lot of the information we come across takes us, you know, if we subscribe to different diets, maybe we wouldn't be, you know, where we're at today. We might still just be eating, you know, meat and eggs every mm. day. Um, but, you know, I know that I am happy, you know, with where I'm at and I've seen myself just become a stronger person where if, you know, when we were on the road um, traveling um, recently, we didn't have access to a gym, but for some reason, you know, coming back, it's like, I didn't lose, you know, step in, you know, my strength, you know, I can still probably even lift more than I did without having to do any deadlifts or bench pressing or squats. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, when I see the progress of myself mentally and physically, you know, like what I'm seeing, and I think, you know, that really helped has helped me be on the right track and always be in search of how can I keep improving my health? You know, uh, for also for Patricia, I want to ask you, you talk about, you know, some of the past sort of changes that uh, you've experienced since going to the, what was it called? Primal meat? Yeah, like raw primal. Yeah, raw primal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what, maybe for both of you too, um, what can you 
what can you say something about you know what changed for you in a positive way that you can directly attribute to this way of life um, you, you mentioned a few of them in the beginning it could be something that you've suffered from from years that gave you freedom i know um people talk from the carnivore diet that you know also you know clarity you know mental health what is it for you that you are really happy about since starting this lifestyle um overall just mm -hmm. feeling good and i think a lot of people don't know um, how good they can feel after they change some things in their in their way of eating so of course you know starting carnivore and getting rid of you know all the junk that we were eating before of course we felt great but you know continuing on and just kind of you know, at first, I think it was more about, you know, weight loss and gaining strength, but then you really start to care about, you know, what you're putting into your body. So when before we didn't care kind of too much about like where we were getting our food, we started to, you know, delve into that more and really started caring about, you know, where we got our meat from, you know, is it grass fed, grass finished, you know, how is it raised? Um, you know, same goes with like, any other foods that we get, like raw milk, we we really love and we've really gotten into. Um, so it's really just learning like what the best food is for your body and going off of how you feel. So that's always the main goal for us right now is just how how can we feel best? Um, and I think that's the most positive change that I've seen, um, let alone, you know, my physical changes is, you know, of course, you know, the mental part is important as well, you know, where um, you know, if someone notices that they don't really feel that well eating, you know, junk, you know, if we were at a party and we just decide to have like a piece of cake or something, you immediately notice the difference. And I think that's a lot of people can test to. Um, so I think, you know, mental changes, um, physical changes, and also just starting to care more about, you know, your overall health, how you're feeling. It seems like you're sensitive to what we're eating. I am sensitive. To yeah, you know, to it when when I would go off track, I've always, you know, I would feel it right away, like instantly yeah. that I am not comfortable. And, you know, when I when I talk to anyone about it, you know, outside of our community, obviously not in the keto or carnivore community, they some of them don't have that. Some of them. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Like, mm -hmm. what do you mean? You, you could feel it like. Do you guys get that? Do you, do you do you have like people around you that talk that are um, not really aware of what effects because they don't feel it right? Mm -hmm. So so they don't uh, care about it as much. But do you guys get that like people around you not knowing what you're talking about sometimes? All, all the time so there's times where you know we've gone to like social events where they're like oh like just have like a little bit of this or just one bite and you know when i've said some things like no like that gives me like really bad acid reflux or makes me extremely bloated right away they're like oh come on and then they say something like well maybe that diet you're on is maybe is maybe not so good for you if you can't handle this and um, it actually wasn't until uh, my mom actually started a, a carnivore diet and went animal based. And then over the holidays, thank you. Over the holidays, she um, decided to, you know, she was going to enjoy herself. And it, she kept telling me, man, I, I need to just get back on track on that diet because she just didn't feel well. And she was one of the people that didn't understand at first until she started the the diet and she actually realizes even with certain seasonings on certain foods you know you don't realize how those even impact you and even some added ingredients in those um like you know what, what would you say um yeah people think or first thought they were crazy you know <laughs> i mean you always hear how meat's so bad for you when you tell someone that that's the only thing you're eating they get a little concerned, you know, and we often laugh about that um, before people aren't very concerned about your health. You know, if you're if you're sitting there eating like, you know, chips and like, you know, bread, pasta every day, like people don't care. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I mean, once you start eating like animal foods, that's when they're like, oh, my gosh, you know, your cholesterol, you know, your heart, you know, aren't you worried about those things? Like, what are you doing? You're going to kill yourself. 
And they find it very hard to believe like how good it can be for you because of everything that we've been told, you know, and conditioned into ourselves that meat is bad for you, animal foods are bad for you. Um, but I mean, it's a different story and that's what we try to tell people um, for sure. But yeah, I mean, people are, you know, they don't understand what we feel, you know, but you just have to try it for yourself. And it's hard to, you know, sometimes get people on that train like it was for your mom. Yeah, even my uh, my brother-in-law tried it. And at first, you know, when, as with starting any diet, you kind of go through almost like a withdrawal period from a lot of processed sugar and you just almost get like the keto flu. He was going through that for about three weeks and he was like, how could this be healthy for anybody? You know, this like, this isn't good for anybody. But then I think, you know, as he went on, cause he was doing it for about two months, mm -hmm he started to feel better where I think now, I mean, I've just noticed this, but we haven't heard as much um, flack from him since he did it. So I'm not saying he's a believer, but he's definitely not a denier. Isn't it nice to, you know, have someone like a friend or a family that have actually tried it or actually on it until this day. It's so nice to hear those type of stories because you know, we help people, you know, outside of our friend and family, but it's different when a family or a friend does it and they talk to you and they thank you, you know, that's, that's the best feeling for me. Yeah, definitely have to agree with you there. Like, it's like heartwarming. Yeah. And, and I, you know, you were talking about, um, you know, how meat is viewed this way. Now, I used to avoid bacon, like the plague, like, <laughs> I, I would remove bacon i would have a piece but since you know obviously mainstream meat mainstream medicine you know talks about fat and how it clogs your arteries and all that um that, that was the most difficult thing to overcome in the beginning I, I i think i can speak to i can speak to most of the people trying to transition into a different diet this diet um it's just the the mainstream um, have a lot of uh, things that they talk about that, you know, would have science that was tampered. So I, I don't know where they get this, their science, but you you both are avid researchers, you know, mm -hmm. evident on your post and, and a huge mm -hmm. part of your lessons you teach your clients is, you know, mm -hmm. to lose fat for good, you know, is we got, you got to learn bioavailability, you know, and nutrient density. You know, I believe that learning and really understanding this alone can significantly improve one's health. So I'd like to get into this deeper with you guys. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. From my perspective, there is a lot of confusion around this for sure. You know, mm -hmm. I'm still confused about it. <laughs> Maybe you guys can uh, talk about it more, but you could be in a meal plan where you thought you were doing something right or consuming something for health you know and then when when nothing seems to work for you 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 un, you don't understand these concepts and you're confused but in fact you you it could be your choices not you so if you're not in the world of nutrition this can be very confusing so let's start with bioavailability here so for our listeners here, anyone can answer this question. Um, let's start with, with that. What is bioavailability? And if you can give us examples of them, maybe food items uh, mm -hmm. compared, compared to other items, um, yeah, anyone of you can start. Well, you know, bioavailability is one of those inter in, uh, interesting things where a lot of people, when they're looking at food, especially for nutrition, they're looking for nutrient density. So if they want, you know, a food that's just jam packed with nutrients, you know, and compared to their calorie level, you know, they'll eat, you know, a bowl of spinach thinking that they're, you know, getting super healthy and getting a lot of iron. But when, once you add in the component of bioavailability, that bowl of spinach doesn't seem to be, you know, looking as healthy anymore. Because, you know, what people don't understand is that 
humans, when they eat things, you know, there are certain foods that when our body eats them, that they're compatible with. Same, you know, it's easy to understand of like, you're not going to drink, you know, a cup of gasoline because it doesn't work for your body, mm. but the food works the same way. Some foods work, some foods don't. And, you know, when it comes to iron in particular, there's two forms of iron that a lot of people maybe aren't familiar with. There's heme iron and non-heme iron. And so, you know, when a lot of people are getting iron, you know, for me, I think of Popeye eating his cans of spinach, you know, and then he also builds muscle at the same time. But spinach contains what's called non-heme iron, which is a very plant-derived form of iron. And in order for the body to get iron from spinach, it has to actually convert it to heme iron. Mm. And, you know, when you translate that over to, to animal foods, you could be eating, you know, a, a piece of steak that's filled with heme iron already. So the body mm. is already able to absorb that, you know, without having to convert it. Because, you know, when you're eating plant foods, you know, not only is it going to take the body more work to make it something that it can use, but they're also filled with plant toxins that can actually prevent that specific nutrient from even being absorbed into your body. So it could be you eat, you know, pounds of spinach a day, but then still ends up iron deficient at the end, you know, and instead of just, you know, going to the food that is already compatible, you know, with your body. That's so interesting. That's so interesting. That's new to me. I, I'm mm -hmm. not in that world yet. <laughs> I'm new to this. So the debate is, you know, meat is more nutrient dense than kale. I see that a lot. Like, right. obviously, if you've tried carnivore, for me, it's not a debate because we see people get better, mm -hmm. inflammation, weight loss, even, you know, I was talking to this gentleman um, uh, for mental health. You know, he was... Mm -hmm diagnosed with severe depression for 40 years he he mm -hmm. he you know transitioned to a carnivore diet and now he's off of his meds um symptom free living so we see people get off their medication all the time i talk to mm -hmm. these people a lot mm -hmm. so so not kale not anything i think <laughs> but meat is packed with more nutrients i believe i'm not a scientist i just see you know i just talk to people that had mm -hmm. great results so um mm -hmm. let's transition into raw meat and raw milk mm -hmm. I, I that i'm so interested in that do you get a lot of heat for this you know uh <laughs> probably from family especially um especially because like when you have a lot of these raw products, you're going to get all of the good bacteria and enzymes with it. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, you got a lot of heat in Chicago when you're going through a detox. Yeah, so my body was uh, getting rid of some stuff, to put it lightly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my, because we we're with our, my parents at the time, but my mom was kind of telling me like, oh, you shouldn't be drinking that raw milk, you know, that this is what caused it. Um, you know, you got to stop that now. And I'm like, no, like just, you know, let it, I'm just going to let it pass. She wanted me to get on like some antibiotics because that's how like worried she was for me, you know, go to the doctor right away. But I mean, our body has to do its, its natural thing to, you know, like Ali was saying to detox and like bad stuff that's in there. And so, you know, I just let it pass and I felt a lot better. And now I can drink raw milk, mm. like no, nobody's business. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, we get black for it all the time, especially with the raw meat, because people are just so, so scared of it, basically. Mm. Mm. Um, I mean, it's just something that you don't see every day and people don't understand why, why you're doing it. Mm. And, um, you know, raw meat has you know all the enzymes needed to um, help your body just fully digest it and easily digest it so um, when we were, were starting to eat raw meat we noticed that we could eat a bunch of meat and kind of feel satiated not full but just satisfied you know and then we were noticing that we just didn't feel like any any bloat or like tiredness or like that, that like full feeling if you eat like a regular steak, but we felt really good. 
So our bodies kind of, it's easier for a body to digest it and, and you get more energy from it too. Mm -hmm. um, so it, when you just kind of look past it being raw and you delve deeper into like, you know, why you're doing it and learning about it, then you're kind of, you know, more inclined to do it. And that's something that, you know, we, we try to explain to people and, you know, like Ali was saying, people like our parents or, you know, friends and stuff, they just don't really understand it, don't know why, you know, we would do it. And they just are like, just eat it regularly. Like, what are you doing? Right. And, and then we'll also hear like, oh, well, you know, human brains got bigger because yeah. we invented fire and started cooking our meat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one thing that people can definitely argue, but they have zero proof behind it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what, what we do know is that humans have been eating meat for thousands of years and a lot of advancements have been made since, you know, we know humans have That's probably right. been eating meat. And, um, and just from, we you know, how, you know, our, our perspective on things, you know, if we're talking about what humans would do from a survival standpoint, I mean, do you think that they were like building a fire, dragging this, you know, elk all the way down, you know, who knows how far they have to go to cook it up, then to eat it? Mm. Probably not. They were probably going to not be butchering this animal to create a good cut that you could roast, but they're probably just going to eat it right away. Mm. And, uh, you know, as we looked more into raw meat, we came across, you know, several studies that are out there but are just now for some reason disappearing from, you know, being published out there. And there's several people that have gone over, you know, eating raw meat, mm -hmm. eating absolutely everything raw. And, uh, you know, Francis Pottinger, Edward Howell, Audrina Sponder Planets. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of these people that, you know, even as people are doing research nowadays, you know, we found that you know, why aren't they mentioning, you know, these people that did these important studies regarding meat, especially eating it raw. Um, and, you know, so despite the flack, I mean, we can't argue with somebody that's not even going to be open minded, you know, yeah, about yeah. it anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me to be able for me to talk about um, this way of living or, or my way of living now is to ask first, Mm -hmm. what what do you want to know because mm -hmm. some people would really be waiting for you to finish talking and just tell their I own do. story <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there some people are not asking to learn some people are just asking mm -hmm. to discount you that. or yeah, steer, yeah. yeah steer something up um yeah yeah absolutely we have a lot of you know we can w what are the examples of any misconception around me i know you talked about you know bacteria right um can you talk a little bit about that and and, and what's what's the truth behind that well you know what a lot of people don't understand is that they have you know a very healthy you know level of bacteria that they're born with you know, so even things like E. coli that people are very afraid of mm -hmm. is actually already living inside of the body and is a huge component to digestion. And, you know, the purpose of it is not to, you know, cause people any harm, mm -hmm. but it's to break down dead matter in, in the body, eat it, you know, and then when it poops it out, you know, that becomes part of our stool. And, when people don't have those healthy levels, you know, then they're going to have a lot of digestion issues. Mm. So when we're eating foods or, or drinking, you know, raw milk that's filled with it, people may accompany that with, well, if they have, you know, diarrhea, mm -hmm. you know, for a week, then that's probably because they didn't, you know, cook their um, meat or they didn't have pasteurized milk. But the problem is that those don't have E. coli or, or other enzymes and bacteria that actually digest that particular food for you. And so when people are, you know, they get those symptoms, it's actually the body doing them a favor of getting rid of a lot of maybe the 
you know, toxins or dead matter, or dead tissue within the body that, you know, down the line could result in diseases, you know, like cancer, or colon cancer and things like that. Um, so all of that bacteria is in, in our benefit. Um, and, you know, from our perspective, you know, we don't really, you know, go through the whole concept that, you know, our food was created here for us to just completely chemically alter it. You know, cows, you know, have milk and we can consume the milk. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that we have to take the milk, heat it up to 270 degrees for like five seconds and then drink the milk. <laughs> you know, it's already available for us and it has been for, you know, mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And especially with, with raw milk, I think raw milk is very interesting because mm -hmm. people just, people don't know how, um, you know, it's Ill illegal in a lot of places, mm -hmm. how hard it is to get um, because they, you know, have said that it's bad for you, right? That you're going to get sick from it. And that's why it's pasteurized and you mm -hmm. have everything else added back into it. Um, but, you know, with our experiences too, just trying to, to obtain it, you know, across the country, I mean, we often say it's like a drug deal mm -hmm. where you have to, you know, find the farmer online and call them and they're asking you very specific questions. You go there, um, you know, kind of drop off your money, take the milk <laughs> and then go. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's very strange. Like so a food that's so natural that we've been consuming forever is, you know, there's so much flack around it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, you know, are trying to talk about it so much is because like milk can be so beneficial for you. Um, and people don't realize that what they're getting at the store is, is just not the real thing. Mm -hmm. It's like um, they like we had we were talking to a dairy farmer that was giving us a lot of flack about having raw stuff versus pasteurized stuff. And, uh, you know, we were saying how, you know, they take away all the fat and then they, you know, kill off, you know, all the nutrients and enzymes just to try to add it back in right after, but they do it with things like canola oil and just, you know, yeah. you know, different, you know, minerals that are just synthetic. Mm. And he was like, we, we put it all back in and it's like, isn't that like the problem? Like mm. you're ruining a food just to recreate the food because you think that the food originally was bad. Mm. Um, and what people don't realize is that even like when, when you cook the food, you're killing off its enzymes too. Mm. And enzymes are coming a finite number in the human body. And so as much as we could get from food, we want, because when you don't have enzymes in the body, that leads to disease. And so when you have like honey or milk or meat in the raw form, you're getting those enzymes and you're not depleting your body of the enzymes that it already has because it's coming from your food no maybe i can start with raw milk <laughs> first of <laughs> all <laughs> first of all i didn't know that i thought it was i thought milk was milk yeah. know, that, that's that's the another conversation for another day i think um yeah. i didn't have any idea that they do anything to milk <laughs> mm -hmm. well first of all what is yeah, we talked, you talked already about what raw mm -hmm. milk is and what they do, you know, they process it, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, and then you talked about the difference between a raw milk and pasteurized milk. Mm -hmm. um, and f for me, you know, let's, it's, it's just a new concept for me, you know, mm -hmm. hearing about raw meat, but obviously I am not ready to discount anything, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, I, I used to think that fat was bad for me, right? Yeah. Main, mainstream medicine uh, always, uh, you know, vilify fat and eating meat. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm open for, for, you know, digging into the research of this. I know you, you guys are, are, all, are avid researchers on, on this topic. That's why I love mm -hmm. you guys. Thank you guys for, for explaining that uh, in detail. Mm -hmm. and you know talking about the myths of of eating raw meat and eat, and drinking uh raw milk right mm -hmm. um so i'd like to talk about coaching now mm -hmm. um i i was going through your program and mm -hmm. there was only one commitment it's a six-month commitment 
Correct. Um, I love that because I believe that it cannot be just the 30 day or just a mm -hmm. 10 day thing. It has to be a lifestyle. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's just my thinking. What's, what's the reason behind the six month commitment for you guys? Well, a big part of it is that, you know, for us, you know, we know from our experience doing any diet, it takes, you know, at, at least 60 days to really start to feel a little bit different. You know, but for a lot of people, they'll try something for a short period of time, but not actually, you know, give themselves the opportunity to, you know, change the lifestyle for the better. And, you know, we can help somebody, you know, lose weight, somebody can, you know, build muscle, but, you know, in order for somebody to actually try to achieve their goals, whether it's like trying to, you know, not be pre-diabetic -di anymore mm -hmm. or you know wanting to um you know have you know better mental health effects and get rid of things like acne or sleep better and a lot of those things take time and doing something in 30 days or 60 days that's fine but you know anybody can lose weight on their own yeah. and you know for us to help you know it's going through you know being able to help them on those times where it's like they're going to be going to a social event and there are a lot of things in there that are very tempting mm. you know, or how to navigate through, they went off and had a cheat day, how to, you know, navigate being able to know that they can get back on track, mm. you know, without having to have one cheat day turn into three weeks of cheat eating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, six months for us as well, we want to help people, but we want people that are actually committed to helping themselves first. You know, I am in transition to uh, going into the carnivore diet. So mm -hmm. I can attest to just um, fighting those urges. First of all, mm -hmm. those cravings, you still have the cravings from keto for sure. You still have mm -hmm. the processed yeah. foods and all that. Um, so I saw that the first 30 days would be focusing on, you know, trying to break those bad habits, which is, I think, the most difficult thing to do yeah, in, sure. in the transition, because you're trying to change your, first of all, your, we talked about the habits and the environment has to change. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously your urges, you have to fight all mm -hmm. the time it's a consistent battle right mm -hmm. sometimes you would lose that battle that's why it's so important mm -hmm. to have that coaching mm -hmm. um right beside you that could you know get you through those you know urges because once you get over that it you, you think it would last a long time but urges last 10 minutes 50 minutes mm -hmm. for me at least i could speak to that but what what's the 30 day the first 30 day look like for your clients you know, usually it goes with some type of transition where they don't feel good. Uh, and that's probably one of the biggest things. They don't feel good. Mm -hmm. They keep thinking, you know, they, they're craving one particular food. And so they think, well, they just have, you know, like one bite of it that'll just satisfy the craving and it'll go away. And while sure it does, the part that didn't go away was having the mental strength to actually not do it again and just mm. kick it to the curb. Because a lot of it's food addiction to processed foods. Mm. Not like somebody starts eating a strict carnivore diet and is like thinking about eating, you know, apples and pears. Mm. They're thinking about eating like cookies and chips. So, you know, a lot of it's a very, it's very food addictive to processed foods, um, not necessarily the, you know, raw, you know, natural foods that are out there. What are yeah. the tools? What are the tools? Sorry, go ahead, Patricia. I, I was just going to say, and it's also just creating the proper environment for you to start mm -hmm. changing. Yes. So getting rid of mm -hmm everything in your house that could possibly lead you down the <laughs> Throw path it all of out. destruction basically <laughs> yeah so that that's really important as well too put it in a trash can and burn it yeah yeah but oh man uh if you don't get rid of it for me for example like i i remember 
when I would have it will it will be it will always be in the back of my mind. Like I know I have the Doritos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back in the pantry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and then uh it's always there. And mm-hmm. if you don't get rid of that, obviously, uh one of these days you're gonna hey, you know what? You're gonna have some days that you're weak. You're gonna have some days that you don't wanna, you know what? It's 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 one. You know, we'll have a few, you know, we'll control ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then next thing you know, the bag's empty. And yeah. so like it it, it is it is I, I i tell i tell i i think i tweeted this the other day that if you can if you if 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 a habit can be formed it can also be broken mm-hmm. doesn't mean Very it's sure. easy doesn't mm-hmm. mean it's easy it's gonna be hard you know but you gotta ha- really desire it you gotta really want it um where, wherever that can come from because it, you have to really be you know tired of your your old habits your your old lifestyle you gotta be because for for most of us for me i my old diet has failed me you know Mm -hmm. i you know i feel depressed i feel anxious Mm -hmm. on it i i don't feel good i'm not comfortable Mm -hmm. on it and so whenever i would go off track I would feel those effects right away. And so just mm-hmm. that just validates the the lifestyle for me. And um, I love what you guys are doing. You guys are like, you know, helping these people transition to a new diet, which is really incredible because it's it's the education part of it is is so crucial because right. you know, for example, you talked about your brother, you know, um mm-hmm. Uh, transitioning into the diet you know obviously he's feeling the effects right Mm -hmm. and and if you you, if you guys are not there because they some of them are not willing to do the research they Mm -hmm. they rely on your information Mm -hmm. and and they're waiting to shut you down Mm -hmm. a a, a bad excuse you know Mm -hmm. they're waiting for a good excuse to get off it and so Mm -hmm. having coaches having you know guys make make you accountable is mm-hmm. really important because sometimes you can't do it by yourself. Um, right. I, I certainly can't do it by myself. And I, I rely on like uh, people like you guys, people mm-hmm. like uh, coaches, um, Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, you know, social, the Facebook groups that really helps me, you know, inspires me to, especially hearing your story, hearing other mm-hmm. people's story to just keep going um, that we're on the right path here that we are seek that we we're, we're all all of us are seeking the same thing you know sustainable mm-hmm. lifestyle that we can you know thrive on you know cuz we 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 don't want we don't want to be bogged down by anxiety depression mm-hmm. those are limiting for for us for our potential and so what you guys are doing are really great and i'd like to applaud you guys on that and um if there if there's anything that you guys want to talk about, uh, the floor is yours. I want you to be able to connect to my listeners. Maybe uh, where can where can my listeners find you guys? Um, well, right now we are primarily on Instagram under Awaken Chicks. Um, we do have our website, awakenchicks.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have a few things that coming in February, um, like we haven't been on our YouTube mm-hmm. as much, but we do have a YouTube on Awaken Chicks. Um, that will have more uploads coming in February. Um, so those are the main things. Am I forgetting anything? No. Are those about it? Mm-hmm. Those are the main things. But, you know, when it comes to health, you know, I think that what we've really just learned, you know, over the years, and um, I actually um, was, I'm a former financial advisor. So for me, you know, especially, you know, growing up, my dad has owned his own business that, you know, financial health is something that's very important to us. Mm -hmm. Um, And we think that, you know, that like when your people are getting healthy, you can't really leave the financial portion out of the picture. Um, Just because, you know, people are dealing with things like depression, people are trying to tolerate, you know, how to reduce their stress Mm -hmm. level. And without being able um, helping people focus on how they can actually, you know, improve their finances, even, you know, when, they didn't come from money, 
you know, it's possible you know, to get out of that without having to, you know, go to school and do things like that. And so for us, you know, we always encourage, you know, clients or anybody that comes to us that you can't just focus on just what you eat. You know, you have to be focusing on, you know, the whole body, you know, and that includes your mental health, that includes you know, your spiritual health, your financial health. And so, you know, part of, you know, what we talk about is trying to help people, help people do that because we know what it's like to, to not have, you know, that type of thing. We don't know what it's like to not have money and to really just be struggling, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in debt, you know, but, you know, through, oh, you know, over the experience, you know, especially, you know, working in finance, um, we find that, you know, that's something that we have to, we feel almost feel like obligated to tell people and have a responsibility to help people get out of the, you know, their situation. I love that guys. Um, awakenchicks.com guys, the website, get their book, uh, coaching as well. You can all find that at, uh, awakenchicks.com and YouTube, uh, on Awaken Chicks, right? As well. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All and, and podcast to you, you guys have a podcast correct right yeah right now there's no um episodes but that's february as well we'll, we'll be waiting for that guys <laughs> this has been a blast thank you guys once again for coming on sharing your story um man i i, I am truly grateful to you guys and uh hope you guys stay safe thanks thank thanks for having us bye